The expanding earth theory has become extremely popular on YouTube. The videos of Neil Adams have approached 2 million views alone, providing impressive animations of the expanding earth. There are also many other people using this new 21st century technology to stimulate more research into the theory, including James Maxlow and Dennis McCarthy. There are even videos available of Klaus Vogel, one of the founding fathers of the theory. But these YouTube videos are only the tip of a very large iceberg. Look deeper into the theory and you will soon find that there have been hundreds of scientific papers written about the expanding Earth. Scientists have been arguing about the expanding Earth theory for decades. Some of the earliest papers challenged the scientific community to explain the evidence for expansion. Although many scientists argued that this task could be ignored, other scientists accepted the challenge and over the intervening years many scientific papers have been published addressing some of the more fundamental problems. One of the more challenging is what could cause the Earth to expand. What is the mechanism? Today there are at least half a dozen proposals that are still being researched. One of these is the cosmic dust accretion model. In my book I explained how the mass increase of the expanding Earth could be due to waves of cosmic dust covering the Earth. Bands of cosmic dust are clearly seen in spiral galaxies. These cosmic dust layers are part of our own Milky Way galaxy and many individual objects such as the Horseshoe Nebula clearly contain vast amounts of dust. This particular cloud is so dark that stars within it are obscured by the thick cosmic dust. We also know that the whole galaxy is rotating so our Sun rotates about our galaxy in about 200 million years while it also bobs up and down through the galactic plane every 30 million years or so. I proposed that since our own galaxy is a spinning disk of stars, planets and dust, it is inevitable that the Sun has carried the Earth into regions of dense cosmic dust over the millions of years of geological time. All this cosmic dust drifts down to the Earth's surface over millions of years to gradually increase the size of the Earth. This rate of accretion must be highly variable so we are now in a relatively quiet period. A common objection to this proposed mechanism is that the rate of accretion is too low. They object that the whole focus of adding mass is wrong. It is contradicted by the current accretion rate of the Earth. Yet look at these recent pictures of cosmic dust clouds produced by the Hubble Space Telescope. Our galaxy is clearly composed of vast bands of cosmic dust.
The pillars of creation are a small part of the Horseshoe Nebula. Dense regions of space, like this, are creating new suns and planets now. If the Earth entered one of these denser regions, the accretion process would happen here. And we know all the suns, planets and dust are moving. NASA has even plotted the relative motion of the stars in a small region of space over the last 10,000 years. All this evidence leads me to the conclusion that waves of cosmic dust could easily cover the Earth over geological time. Another common objection to a cosmic dust accretion model is that any accretion releases a lot of energy which would warm the planet's interior or that there is no geochemical evidence of a gigantic growing extraterrestrial mass the effect would be gross and obvious we can check whether these objections are valid with a simple experiment. The average rate of Earth expansion can be calculated from the geological evidence for expansion. It amounts to a layer of dust less than one-tenth of a millimetre thick per day. Now we need an outside surface that this simulated cosmic dust will cover. The amount of cosmic dust needed to cover this to a depth of one-tenth of a millimetre per day can then be calculated. Ordinary fine dust can be used to simulate the cosmic dust. This sample is relatively fine with some small stones that might represent micrometeorites. A suitable container was used to measure out daily amounts of dust. This container holds about five days worth. This simulated cosmic dust can then be spread over the chosen area each day. It can be clearly seen that the amount of this simulated cosmic dust is very small. By the day 12 review, 
it is obvious that most of the fine dust has disappeared. The only remaining part of the simulated cosmic dust are the small stones. The reason it has disappeared is clear. Rain simply washes it away. There is no massive energy release, no gross and obvious effect. Cosmic accretion on a scale necessary for an expanding Earth is easily possible. The Earth would simply be slightly dustier during times of maximum cosmic accretion. Average yearly rainfall is over 1000 millimeters and it would dwarf the amount of dust added by cosmic accretion. Rain simply washes the cosmic dust away. <laughs>